That's how I got these fish for $10. I personally believe you need three to four tanks to grow out the fry. So those guys, I really consider the pinnacle of classy looking Tanganyikan cichlids. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about some brand new fish that I've got. There's a bit of a story behind it and I wanna share that with you now. So let's get into this week's video. And here are the brand new fish for the fish room, guys. They're currently in their quarantine aquarium. I understand they are from the exact same fish room, so they should be fine in the same aquarium together. But obviously I have isolated them from the rest of my fish room with the sump system because I run all my tanks on a sump system. These guys have been quarantined off and I'm doing water changes on this tank separately to the rest of the system. Now, some of you experts in the Lake Tanganyika and uh, cichlid world will probably recognize what these species are, what both the species are. The majority of you probably would recognize one of the species and that is the fish with the orange dorsal fin. Those are Neolamprologus cordopantatus. The other fish look very, very similar to something I already have in the fish room. They look very similar to Neolamprologus brevis, but these guys aren't Neolamprologus brevis. These are Neolamprologus coriolis, and they are a shell dweller from Lake Tanganyika, just like Neolamprologus brevis, what I currently have. However, these guys grow way larger than brevis can. The males grow so large, they actually grow larger than the shells that uh, the females inhabit. When they're spawning, the male has to sit at the entrance of the shell to fertilize her eggs. Anyway, these guys are a little bit off from being breeding age, and I thankfully have four of them in this aquarium and three of the Cordopunctatus. Now the key thing with these Cordopunctatus is that they are the orange fin variety. You can see their beautiful high dorsal fin that they have. Some varieties out there are the yellow variety. These guys thankfully are the orange type. So I'll get into how I got these fish and why I selected them. Every year, once a year, the New South Wales Cichlid Society holds a major raffle where they auction off fish. So the society posts a tentative list of fish that will be up for grabs at this major raffle. And there were two species of fish that I was semi-interested in getting. Now, I actually wasn't really going to buy a ticket for the raffle. I didn't want to come home with fish uh, at first because I have a lot of fish that I'm already breeding and I believe you need at least two to three really four tanks ideally for any breeding pairs that you have. So in a fish room, if you've got a breeding pair, say you've got a breeding pair of calvus, Altolamprologus calvus. I personally believe you need three to four tanks to grow out the fry. So you've got all the fry at different stages because one with calvus, you can't really mix the fry together because the older fry can eat younger fry. The calvus will even eat smaller fry that are from the same spawn because they grow at different rates. So with calvus, you need, I believe, three to four tanks just for fry grow out, and then you need a tank obviously for the parents to spawn in. So because of that, I've got a number of breeding pairs of Lake Tanganyika cichlids in my fish room. A lot of those tanks are reserved for my breeding pairs for fry grow out. Now, because of that, obviously don't have a lot of tanks to house a lot of different species. So I really wasn't planning on buying any tickets in this uh, raffle, in the cichlid raffle, but I was semi-interested in two of the species on the list. The species that I was interested in were the Lamprologus coleurus, as well as Altolamprologus fasciatus. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you will know that I own a number of fish from the Altolamprologus genus. I've got two different types of calvus, the white and the black, and I also have some gold compressorceps, some gold Altolamprologus compressorceps. So I've got three different types of Altolamprologus fish in my fish room, and I was considering if I was to win early on in the raffle, I would get the Altolamprologus fasciatus because they aren't a common fish. I like the look of them and I was semi-interested in getting those. The other fish I was interested in getting were the Lamprologus coriolis. So out of this massive list of fish, I was only semi-interested in those two species. I'd later decided after looking at the fish there was uh, and, and the actual final list of fish because again, the list of fish that they posted was a tentative list and some changes uh, were made on the night. However, once I was there, I was like, oh, I, I started to really warm to the idea of potentially bringing some new fish home and that excited me. So I thought instead of going all out, I'll buy just two strips of tickets. So I spent 10 bucks about the fourth or fifth raffle number that was drawn, I was one of the lucky winners. And the first fish I picked, I was looking over at my cousin Adam and I was trying to mime to him, asking him at the last second, which fish should I select? The Coriolis or the Altolamprologus fasciatus? 
and he didn't know what I was trying to uh, word to him. So I just went with the Coriolis because I like uh, shell dwellers obviously as well. And I really like the look of these guys. Although they look like Neolamprologus brevis, there are some differences as you can see in these images here. They've got more of a gold head. They obviously grow larger like I said, and they actually have a forked tail. And I really like that look of these fish. So I thought they have a more of a kind of beautiful look than the Altolamprologus fasciatus uh, do. And they might actually be a little easier to sell than the fasciatus. And then in the last few seconds of trying to decide which species of fish I should go for out of that massive list of fish, I decided to go for the Neolamprologus coriolis. Obviously I'm looking at uh, two strips of tickets. Some people purchased $50 worth of tickets, some people purchase $100 worth of tickets. So obviously my chances of winning any of the fish were a lot slimmer than other people. Now as the raffle goes on, there's less and less fish available and everyone's going for, you know, the rarer fish, the most expensive fish, and the more common fish are left behind. And it was getting to the point where I actually didn't really want to win anymore because I didn't want to have to come home with fish I don't want, obviously, and I, especially South American cichlids, but that's only because my fish room isn't set up for South American cichlids. So the raffle's continuing on and I'm not holding much chance of winning again when some people have bought 50 or $100 worth of tickets. So I'm just kind of sitting back and a while later I win again and there weren't many Tanganyikan cichlids left. I did see that these Cordepunctatus were the orange fin variety. So I said, I've got to get those guys. Jumped at the chance at them. There was another type of cichlid I was actually semi-interested in that I didn't mention earlier uh, that were available in the raffle. And uh, they were the Lepidio Lamprologus elongatus. These guys are very aggressive and kind of look like Barracuda. They remind me of that. And I was tempted to get them, but uh, I didn't want to have to have them isolated in the tank by themselves because of their pure aggression. I have had another cousin in my family who has bred them, and, and that was in the early 90s. And I believe he was one of the first people in the state to breed Lepidio Lamprologus elongatus. And uh, my uncle, his father, also bred them recently and uh, sold all his uh, elongatus. So another reason why I didn't go for those fish is because some family members have already had them and bred them and uh, I want something different and a bit more of a different type of challenge. I recently sold off, and you guys are just gonna find this out now, I was gonna save this for another video, but I recently sold off my Neolamprologus tetrocephalus. So I've got a spare tank now, a free four foot tank, that's two foot wide by two foot deep, massive tank, one of the largest tanks I have in my fish room, free, because I sold four of those off. They're so aggressive, I couldn't keep any other fish with them. So it was kind of a waste of a tank, and I wasn't having any really success raising their fry when they would spawn, so I sold them off. So now I've got a spare tank for a community tank, basically. I can have other Tanganyikans in together because most of the Tanganyikans I have are relatively peaceful fish. So getting Lepidio Lamprologus elongatus at the raffle would have undone all that and would have had more aggressive fish. So one of the other reasons why I went with the Cotopunctatus over the elongatus, because they were pretty much, uh, from memory, uh, there was probably another couple to handful of Tanganyikans that were available like uh, Brashadi, um, or fish that I've had already in the past, so I didn't want that. So uh, another reason why, spur of the moment, you gotta, you gotta decide pretty quickly on what fish you want because people are waiting for, uh, to select their fish as the raffle keeps getting drawn. So you don't have much chance to decide and that's why they give you the list ahead of time. I really didn't expect to win a second time, but seeing the Cotopantatus up there and the orange fin variety, I thought, yep, I'll grab those guys as well because uh, I know the orange fin variety look beautiful and you can see here, they are a stunning looking fish. Now, in the past, I have said uh, there are some uh, what I call classy Lake Tanganyikan cichlids. And I believe these guys are up there as one of the classiest Lake Tanganyikan cichlids out there. So what I mean by that, I used to have Neolamprologus walteri. They are a type of brashadi looking like cichlid. Adam gave me some of his fry when I first set up the fish room. And it turned out I really uh, didn't have much success with them. A lot of them got sick very early on and I was only left with one. So I gave him back that one fish. 
Now in that time, I grew to love those fish because of their markings, the pattern, that checkerboard pattern down the side of their body is really nice, it looks really neat, it makes them look like a really neat fish, to me anyway, that's what I think. So those guys, I really consider the pinnacle of classy looking Tanganyikan uh, cichlids. And I really do believe that the next in line, if not, probably a little bit beats them because they've actually got some color on them, uh, not just gray. Uh, they've got the, you know, the orange dorsal fin, is the Cotopunctatus. I mean, look at the pearling on each of those scales down the length of the body. Nice blue sheen on those scales. And then the high dorsal fin. Now, when I showed my girlfriend these fish, the first thing she said was, they look like they've got mohawks. And I said, well, that's actually really fitting that you think that because the short name for these guys are punks. <laughs> and it was really fitting that. That was the first thing she thought of when she saw these fish. And I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, there you go, guys. That's how I got these fish for $10. Some rare Lake Tanganyikan cichlids. I'm really happy about it. As you can see, there's no decor in this tank. I am going to put some in, but I wanted to film this footage for you guys so you can easily, clearly see the fish before I put the rocks and shells in for these fish. They've only been in this tank for about 24 hours now, so they're in quarantine. I'm just gonna have to live with that for a little bit of time. So what do you guys think? Did I make some good selections there or did I make some bad ones? Let me know in the comment section down below. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.